Welcome. In this video, I'll go over solutions for the problem set assigned from 10.1 Part D. Number 5 says draw and name all the structural isomers of C3H3Cl5. So this is a extreme halogenoalkane because it's got five chlorines substituted in, but it limits how many um, different variations we can see because I can have my three carbons in a backbone and I could have all three chlorines on one would be the maximum and then the other two on the second one with the three hydrogens rounding it out or I could again put saturate this one with three chlorines but now just put one chlorine here and one chlorine here leaving the three hydrogen Or my other option is to spread out and instead of having three chlorines on the end, have just two chlorines here. And if I have two chlorines here, that means I have to put, um, I could put two chlorines on the end and one chlorine in the middle. Because if I put three chlorines on that end, that would just be flipping over what I've already done. Or I could put two chlorines on this end, and I put, could put two chlorines on the middle one, and just one chlorine on the end, and fill in my hydrogens like so. Or the one other one I missed is I could put um, three chlorines on the end, and I could put um, both chlorines out here and no chlorines on the center. So I have five different possibilities. Now naming them, I made kind of a mess here so I'll see if I can squeeze and name them. This first one is going to be 1, 1, 1, 2, 2, and then because I have five it's going to be pentachloral. Uh, propane. And these are all going to be pentachloral propanes. What's going to vary is the numbering system. So with this one, my numbering be 1, 1, 1, 2, 3 pentachloral propane. This one would be 1, 1, 1, 3, 3. This would be 1, 1, 1. Oops, I got an extra one there. So it'd be one one two two three, and this one would be one one two three three. So they each have their uh, slightly different name and slightly different structure. Eight A wants to know when comparing the boiling point of different classes of compounds, why is it important to choose molecules that have similar molar mass? Well, increased mass, as you'd expect, requires an increase in energy to increase the movement, which is what leads to boiling point. There's enough movement to break free of the bonds. So you have to have somewhat similar, or you don't know if it's the polarity or if it's the mass that's creating the changes. B says, explain how, would you expect this, how you would expect the solubility of alcohols in hexane to change with increasing chain length. So what they expect you to realize is that hexane is nonpolar. So nonpolar substances will most readily dissolve. Well, alcohols have the nonpolar R group and then the highly polar OH group. So the shorter the R group, the more dominant the polar OH end is. So longer alcohols, we're going to see an increased solubility in hexane because you've got more of this nonpolar group to set up temporary dipoles with the hexane. Number 12, which of the following compounds has the highest boiling point? So as I look, I see that this is going to have some polarity with the Cl group. This is going to have some polarity with the oxygen. 
This is going to have a lot of polarity with the hydrogen bond, and this is going to have a lot of polarity with the hydrogen bond and another polar bond. So A is going to be the winner there. It's got the greatest uh, sources of intermolecular forces, giving it the highest boiling point. Number 13, how many isomers can be drawn for C5H12? So this is just pentane. It's an alkane, no double bonds at all. So I could draw just the backbone, and you could go ahead and put all 12 hydrogens on if you want. But when you draw an isomers, I think it's easier a lot of times just concentrate on the backbone. So then my other option is to have four on the backbone, and then the other carbon could be here, or it could be here, but these are really the same thing. They're mere images. And if I put it out on the end, that's really the same as this one. That's no different. So I've got a five carbon backbone. I've only got one version of the four carbon backbone. And when I do the three carbon backbone, the only place I could put the two extra carbons are on that center one. Because again, if I put them on the end, it's not really a different isomer. So I've only got three possibilities for C5. However, when you go to C6 and C7, the possibilities increase exponentially. It goes up very quickly with the potential number of isomers. And number 14, below are four structural isomers. They all have the molecular formula C4H9Br. State the name of each of the isomers for A, B, C, and D. So A, when I look at it, I've got, um, my bromine is the black one there, so I've got one bromo, and then I count, and I've got four carbons, so this would be butane. So A would just be one bromo, butane. B is very similar, but the bromine is moved over one, so this would simply be two bromo, butane. C, now we have a little branching going on, so I actually have a methyl group and the bromine off a of three carbon backbone. So this is going to be considered two bromo, two methyl, propane, even though I still have four carbons, the methyl and propane account for it. And D, because the uh, bromo is attached to the the methyl group, now I look at it as going this way, whereas this is my longest backbone here. So now this is going to be one bromo, two methyl, propane.